Hey everyone, and welcome to my conversation with Audrey Delgado. Audrey is a Bolivian living in Germany. She's incredibly passionate about theater, performance, acting, and really in general, exploring the world and its amazing cultures. And so we have an amazing conversation about all of those things, and especially the differences between Bolivia, Germany, the United States, as, as we're both living in, living in Germany currently. And uh, so much more when it comes to storytelling and, and performance and uh, life in general around the world. So this is a really, really cool conversation. It crosses off another country off the list in my uh, journey or our journey uh, to explore the world together. And that involves trying to have one from every a person from every single country around the world on the podcast. And so this is another one off the list here just in these first five episodes. So we're doing pretty good so far with a lot more coming down the road as well. So hopefully you guys enjoy this conversation with Audrey. Without further ado, let's check it out. I am very fascinated because obviously I want to hear a lot more about attending a German school in Bolivia and what that was like, because obviously it had been a pretty unique experience. So what was attending a German school in Bolivia like and growing up speaking basically three languages? Well, it, I think it was uh, really uh, a privilege, honestly, because I think this school is really a privileged one in my country and also in my city. You know, they say it's like a school for rich people, so to say. But it's kind of true because it's, it's very expensive. Well, it wasn't that expensive mm-hmm. when I got in, but now it's like, oh my God, like very, one of the most expensive schools, I would say, in wow. my, my city, at least, in my country. But, um, I mean, it was it was uh, strange because my parents also were in this school and my sisters and then my cousins and then like also my uncles. And it's like, there was- Crazy, so yeah. whole, whole family, how big was the school? Like how many students per per grade? Like in my grade, there were 60. Okay, so it's a fairly small school. Yes, it's not so big. Like in, in my grade, just in like, a, yeah, mm-hmm. my grade. And every every course, I would say, has like 60. People. Yeah, so I mean, like how common are German-speaking schools in Bolivia? Well, there are like, uh, I think, five. So, I mean, that, that's a decent amount, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you have like in La Paz, in my city, you have in Santa Cruz. Sucre, Cochabamba, I think, and Oruro, I think, yeah, they are five. Like, and we are nine, so to say, states. So yeah. it's kind of, you have one in almost every state in Bolivia, so to say. I mean, still, though, that's pretty crazy. Like, that's just something that you don't hear. I, I don't think, at least that blew my mind when I first heard <laughs> about that. I'm like, what? <laughs> like, why yeah, are there yeah. German speaking schools in South America? That makes no sense. Yeah, and that, that's funny because there are also French schools, French speaking schools, and also American schools. And yeah, well, I mean, in my city, there is one school, which is Calvert, the name of the school. And people there, like the students, they have the same uh, period of classes as in the United States. And they wow. speak English like mm. as native. I mean, like, they have they don't even have accents, you know. Yeah. So wow. Yeah, I guess it's pretty, it's pretty common. I, don't know. <laughs> I mean, it's fascinating though because like, did you feel like it was strange growing up, like that you were speaking German? Because like, obviously, that's just to an American, that's so strange. <laughs> yeah, probably. I mean, like, um, I mean, when you're inside the school, I think it's pretty normal. Yeah. Because it's like okay, my my parents did that. My, par- my parents speak also German, so I was like, okay, um, it's, this is what it's normal, we do. this is yeah. what we do, right? Um, and then when you go to, uh, like, when I went to the university, for instance, yes, to know people from coming from many different schools and backgrounds, it was like, okay, then, th- then I realized, okay, I think it was a privilege to learn, like, even two more languages, because we learn also in that school English. Um, and a lot of people at the university didn't know even English. So yeah. then I remember my mom always said, like, no, languages are doors, you know, like world doors. So they're portals. Yeah, exactly. And then it's like you need I was like, Yeah, ma'am, you know, like and then <laughs> just the same. Yeah, just the same. And then when you when you when I when I went to the university and I and I actually saw people that 
didn't really know English or were struggling because we had like a, a electives where we had to take languages, they were struggling with them. So I was like, oh, okay, no, it's a privilege then. And then when when I came here, um, and, and I did also like an exchange in Germany 16 years ago when I was 16. Crazy. <laughs> so like, uh, I mean, uh, then I also realized that, yeah, actually it's, it's so um, incredible how you can like communicate with people in their language. It's like, I mean, then you see like when you got lost, you can ask. I mean, for, for tiny things like that. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, you realize that <laughs> actually real. it's true. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Like <laughs> languages are doors, you know. Yeah. I mean, I mean, what? How do you feel like life's different for someone in Bolivia who doesn't know? I mean, it has to change your perspective in some way, right? Because like, yeah. if you know multiple languages, I mean, growing up, you're even with the internet, you're able to experience different parts of the world that someone who doesn't feel languages wouldn't be able to experience. So like, how do you feel like that shapes your perspective even from an early age versus someone who doesn't speak English or German or other languages who grew up in Bolivia? Well, I think, um, I think nowadays it's starting to like, people are are realizing how important languages are. Because of the internet. Yeah, of course. And then if you want to get a better job, you need to speak at least English. That's, that's, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's so, so, um, it's so strange because when I was like, when I was a kid, actually, I, I was like learning the languages, you know, and then you don't really realize it's like, okay, they are, it's useful because now I, I can understand maybe the movies, I can hear the music and I understand actually what they are singing. Right. Uh, speaking of English, but then, um, if you, (laughs) if you see like other people, like, I don't know, I have some friends actually that they don't, they, they struggle a lot with English and I'm like, Oh my God, oh my God. And then, yeah, but I mean, then I'm, I'm like, Oh Jesus, then, but you need to learn because then you're not going to get better jobs or better payments. Now people are asking like in the, in the work positions, okay, we need uh, someone that speaks at least English now, right? So, For sure. So, yeah, I think it's like, but, but, but it's also complicated because, um, I mean, like I said, my school was privileged. Um, most of the people in Bolivia doesn't have the chance, to, doesn't have the chance to go to a, like, a school like that, right? For sure. I mean, they, they go to public schools and not all of them <laughs> are so good. Um, and that's, that's kind of sad because it's like, we, not all of us have the same chance Mm -hmm. to like have a, this, this opportunity to say. I mean, are other languages taught from early age at other schools or like English or other languages taught or anything like that? Or is is it not so much, not till later in in the schools? Because I know in the U S for example, like you don't, some schools might start teaching like Spanish or something. Like in middle elementary. So like if you're like maybe 10 years old or something, you might start learning Spanish. Mm-hmm. But at least at my school, we didn't start learning till uh, like freshman year of high school. So I was like 15. Yeah, I think it's it's pretty much similar. But, or maybe now they are starting to teach the like w- the kids English, for instance. Okay. But I would say that's not uh, it's not something so like um i don't know it's not a good level so to say Uh, yeah that makes sense it's very basic yes so a lot of people for instance um they took like a private classes if you have the chance you can play pay for an institute in english and a lot of of people i knew went to the same institute for instance right to to learn english yeah Uh, so yeah, I think it's it's uh, yeah that I think it's changing now that you're starting to to teach English before, but yeah, I think it's still a basic level. So to say. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, oh. take me back to the time when when you like kind of first realized how big of an advantage knowing multiple languages like fluently is, or like how old were you when you first or like would you when did when like. When would you classify yourself as fluent in English and German? How old were you when you just said you were? Oh, um, I don't know. But yeah, I'm thinking like at school when I start, because it's fun. Yeah. Right. It's funny because we <laughs> learned German before English. 
Yeah, it's so it's weird. cool when we were like so technically English yeah. is your third language. Yeah, kind yeah. of. And it's yeah, it's it's you're making real you're making me realize that and it's so fun. <laughs> That's so crazy. Yeah, because uh we start like well, uh when I when I um uh, got in the school, well because we have like kindergarten um uh, break kindergarten or something yeah. like that and then preschool or whatever. Preschool, yeah, exactly. I I didn't go to the Bolivian class. Because mm. it was full, so um, my my parents said, "Okay, there is only uh, one place in the German class." Because it, in my in my school in La Paz, I think it's not it's not like that in all the schools around Bolivia or even in South America, because there are also on a lot of German schools in yeah, fascinating. South America. Um, but in my school, you have like one class which is for Germans that. Germans um, well have everything, of course, in German. So if you as a Bolivian get in that class, you're gonna have everything in German, and then you can like finish the school with the with also a title that you have done wow. like a German school, so to say, but also a Bolivian like a uh, yeah degree or I don't know how to call it yeah like, like certification almost yeah exactly kind of that. So um, I was in that class first, and so how old were you then? Like six years old? <sighs> yeah, five. What oh, yes. the? and then I I started learning. So like, at that um, point, you already sort of knew German. Yeah, because they, they, because I was with Germans, you know. I, I mean, there were all Bolli uh, other Bolivian kids in that class yeah. too. But because we were not native German speakers, we so had to what? Class was, who were the German kids in this class? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> like whose parents are in Bolivia who are German? Like, why did they move there? Like, what is the story behind these kids? Okay. <laughs> I'm so interested. Yeah, well, I think most of them were like working in some German firm, probably. Oh, okay. Or in Teacher's the embassy, kids? yes. <laughs> or oh, the embassies. German embassy. Oh, fascinating. Or maybe uh, even in, in the same school. Yeah. Because we had a lot of German teachers also. Makes sense. So, yeah, I think they were like, uh, yeah, m moving to Bolivia wow, because so of that. And because, yeah, if you if you're in, in German school and you're a teacher there, then you have some benefits. It's less you don't need to pay it that much yep. or um, yeah, or maybe. Yeah, I mean. They give you a lot of benefits if you. I mean, I mean, I mean it, at least it was like that in right, that time, of course, right? Of I course. don't. I'm not sure if it's like that it's anymore. Been a minute. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but um, yeah, exactly. And then, and that's why we, we, the other Bolivian kids, we had to like learn the language, like. But yeah. We, we, so, did you have German friends growing up that you would just talk German with? Yeah, yeah. I mean, like uh, they, they also speak, I think, Spanish. I would too. assume so if yeah. they grew up in. Bolivia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, they, 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 yeah, they, they, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, they, I remember they did. Actually, yeah. they did. Um, so, did you prefer to talk to them in Spanish or German growing up? I don't remember. Honestly. Oh, interesting. I think. Um, well, I'm. Oh, I think we speak. We spoke in, in Spanish a, a lot, but also in the cl the classes, everything was in German. Yeah. So, yeah, I, wow. I, I'm not sure anymore. But then, you know, I switched the class because I was very unhappy in that class. <laughs> oh, wow. Wait, how old were you when you switched? I was like, I think 10 or 11 oh, So you were years. there for a while, though. Yes. Okay, yes. well, that's crazy. So you were fluent in German by the age of like six. Yeah, yeah, kind of. I think, yeah, I, I could understand it very well and yeah, write, even write it and... Yeah. Oh my God. No, <laughs> no I can't write so fluently. You wait, know? That's insane. So, wait, so when did English come into play? When I was in fifth grade, when I was like, okay, so yeah, like 12, 11, 12, 11, yes, yeah. because I switched the class. And when I did that, because I wasn't happy, I mean, I don't know why, but the people in my class were not so nice. And then I, I, I was like, I don't want to stay here. And then I talked with my parents. Those German bullies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and then we decide to. Well, I talk with my parents. I, 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 I remember that, and then I switched the class, and I was with Bolivian, and you know, mm. and that was a shock, sh shocking because they were like so noisy, and they were like <laughs> playing, and I actually see people bullying other people, and I was like. <laughs> Oh my God, <laughs> this is so, so strange. Wow. Yeah. And then we started learning English. And Man. yeah, I remember it with the presentations and everything. Even, you know, they make us like uh, dictations. And I always had a good grade in dictations. I, so I knew how to write properly in English. And I 
I, I was like, oh, I think I'm kind of good in English, yeah. you know, like I, I can write properly. I, I understand what they are saying. We had to also make some presentations in English about some random topic, like for instance, okay, choose a recipe and uh, present the <laughs> recipe and actually do the dessert. Oh, for nice, instance, nice, right? So, so I, I never had <laughs> issues with that. I, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it, it was easier for me that time, I think, because now I, I, th I have the feeling like I struggle a little mm. bit more with my languages, you know? Crazy. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> do you feel like, so do you think understanding those languages from such an early age gave you a different perspective of like op what's possible, like versus the average Bolivian? I mean, I would assume the average Bolivian is not just moving to Germany. Yeah, you no, know. no, I mean, <laughs> I think I didn't realize about that yeah. in here because uh, I just had, I, I just remember that I realized, okay, um, if you, I, I would stay in the German course, I would finish my, I mean, like the, the school with this certificate. So I could like come to Germany and do my bachelor here, like, oh, like right pretty away. much right away. Um, so is that pretty common if you finish throughout that school, you go straight to Germany for bachelor's? Yeah, there, there are, yeah, a lot of my classmates ah. did that. Um, and yeah, I mean, because there is a thing that if you don't have that certificate or something, I don't know how to call it in, in English, but uh, it's like when you, and you decide still to come to Germany, you have to do like a Studienkolleg. That's like a, like again, the last year or something like that. So you are like in the same level, I would I say. See, like I don't know. With like the you're gonna education system. Yes, or are you are gonna get that that certificate I that see. you need for the university? Yeah. So a lot of my classmates actually, when we were already in uh, high school, they switched to this German class ah, to have this uh, like certificate. Like the early certificate yes, for German Because they education. were like, um, most of them were sure that they wanted to come to Germany to do the, the bachelor's. Crazy. So yeah. yeah. And, and, you know, I have some friends also from this French school and they had like the same system. So very similar, but they didn't have like... This difference between Bolivian school uh, class and, and German class. They had, I mean, everyone were the same ah, and they all speak. France, yeah. And, and they all uh, spoke, uh, I mean, still they speak French as native speakers, right? Yeah. We, we were like some people of my class, of my Bolivian class, so to say, like nowadays they... They don't speak so fluently. Yeah. Still. Wait, so when you, on like forums for stuff, do you type that you're a native German, English, and Spanish speaker? Because I feel like you probably should. Yeah. Um, no. <laughs> really? <laughs> no. I feel like no, you have, I mean, come no. on. I guess that's like as native as you can get without being native. Yeah. But, yeah. But um, I don't know. It's like, I think with the time, I, I was like, uh, I mean, when I finished the school, I think I was I was still very good in in German because we are, we have also to do a language um, certification right. in German. So I got that, and um, yeah, but that was for foreign students, you know, like not mm. native speakers. But at least like B one, B two, like we had to do all the time those those certifications during the school. Yeah. So when I finished, I got it, and I think I was very good in German. And now, when after so many years that I have finished the school, I think I, I never practiced that much German anymore. I mean, English, yes, because you hear music in English, you can see serious movies, everything is yeah. kind of easier yeah. with English, you know. But the culture German, is kind of everywhere, yeah. Yeah, but Germany in Bolivia, or I mean, South America is not so common. Anywhere besides Germany, yeah, really, I mean, I mean. Yeah, I mean, and that's no, that makes why. sense, I, yeah. So, yeah. so how long did you go between, like, really speaking a lot of German to then actually moving to Germany? <laughs> well, I mean, I finished the school. Now I'm going to tell you how old I am. <laughs> <Nah>. <laughs> but I'm, I'm like, okay, I finished school in 2009. Okay. Then I started the university directly in Bolivia. And that was like, I finished the university in 2015. And okay. then I started working. And yeah, I mean, I came last year. <laughs> so, so it was like five or six years? Yeah, kind of. Uh, but then... So how much German do you feel like you lost in those like six years? Oof, 
now I think it's more than six years. I think it's like maybe eleven years oh, or okay. something like that. I, I think I have I have lost a yeah. lot because, for instance, I was very good in writing German. I was really good. I could yeah, like yeah, yeah. Uh, I didn't commit so many mistakes, you know. And now it's like fuck. <laughs> I, I I don't remember how do you say this, you know, and I need a, a, actually a translator. Before I was like, okay, I I could like, I mean, like put my my ideas written yeah, in German yeah. and yeah, and I, I I remembered very well the rules and everything about the grammatic, you know. But Crazy. now it's like, fuck, <laughs> I can't anymore, you know. <laughs> so it's like. Damn, yeah, you need to practice your languages. <laughs> yes. I mean, that, that's a long time. Though. I, mean, I mean, do you feel like it's gotten, I mean, it's had to have gotten better though over the last year you've been here then. Yeah, I, well, yeah, I think um, it was also good too because when I arrived, uh, a family hosted me, a German family. Oh, wow, yeah. And, well, they they know English. They They speak English, I think, very good, but, you know, they they knew that I was going to speak German, so they didn't even try to speak to me in English, mm. you know? So I had to like, okay, I, I understand, but then I don't know how to... And then I really tried to communicate with them. So I think that was really helpful to refresh it That's a nice. bit. Yeah. Crazy. I mean, after that amount of time, did you, did you feel more confident in your English than your German at that point? Or no? Yes. I feel okay. So crazy. So even though you had like the five year head start in German as a kid, (laughs) yeah, 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 the English still ended up feeling more confident just because of practice or just being more relevant in your life, even over that that period of time. Yeah, exactly. I mean, uh, yes, because um, even when I was working, I mean, I was working an NGO which was British actually, Mm. but um, somehow (laughs) there was no English speaker in the in the ngo i mean what i think there, what do they there were speak? yeah i mean normally spanish but there were like three people who who were or four people that who who, who speak english crazy and it was yeah it was crazy because th- we had like some visitors of of uk you know because they, they were they wanted to see the projects because yeah, we were the same NGO, you know? Yeah, yeah. So they came and it was like, okay, I need to communicate with them in English. We, I need to translate for the people who's not speaking English. And then um, sometimes I had to also translate some of the materials we 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 did about the projects also in English because they were going to receive okay. them. I mean, yeah, in the sense. UK. So, yeah, then you see, I mean, English is something that's, basic i think if you want to work yeah i mean yeah i mean again as an american you just don't really think about it growing up you're like well i only i'm dumb i only know english but you don't really (laughs) realize how much access that gives you to the whole world which i i think we as americans we should probably like really try to like capitalize on more because it is a huge advantage and like you don't really know how much you can really easily travel just by speaking english i didn't really ever think about it you know i'm like well, I don't know Fran- I don't know French, so you know can't go to <laughs> can't go to France or you know whatever it is or Germany. But you know, I mean, without speaking German, I'm able to pretty much just live in Germany. You know, it's like that's yeah. kind of crazy because there's enough English where it's like doable. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, uh, you know, like how m- how many people come here without knowing German? I mean, yeah, it's and just because they know English, right? Yeah, and I, when I everyone think, in our every, basically everyone yeah, in, our, in, our, in our grade, yes, yeah, our, exactly. Our and then I I think about um, the friends that I have back home that doesn't speak English, and I'm like, dude, you're fucked, you're <laughs> fucked. You need to learn English. You need to learn. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're I, not gonna do anything it, in your life. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> yes. I mean, to be fair though, I mean, if you're gonna have another language, Spanish is a pretty good one. It, it takes up a pretty good portion true. of the world. You know. True. <laughs> but yeah, that's true. But I think that's also like English, new, Spanish, so like say. you know, Chinese or yeah. you know, something like that. Yeah. Like if you can good Mandarin or something like that, give you a good advantage in life. Yeah, yeah, I think that that's true. But yeah, so, I, I mean, think- like speak to like the power of language. You know, I mean, in in general, I think all of those things combined. Like, what's your experience with the power of language? <laughs> I think I think it's like um, totally like my mom said. I, I think it really opens your doors because through the language you can also get to know a culture. You know, it's like 
It's so crazy, but but also when I when I came here and I started to talk with the people in in English and it was the only way I could communicate with them, then you're like, oh my God, <laughs> yes, right? Like it's it's true. I mean, like and then, okay, um, you when I met Sylvia, for instance, she mm -hmm. was like at the beginning, she was like, please translate, please. When we went to a coffee, please, can you <laughs> ask? Uh, like a German, yeah. yeah, can you ask? for me like I want a coffee I don't know how to say that coffee and then bitter. I yes exactly it's like a oh my god it, it it's true and then um yeah I mean you you realize that only maybe when you're out and I I don't know I mean I I was talking it's curious because I was talking about this with my mom yesterday and she was like please talk to your sisters about your experience oh, wow. with languages because I am tired of telling them, okay, please practice your German, practice your, your because my other sister also learned French, mm. but she needs to finish it, you know? And I don't know, but, but it's like that. I mean, when, when you are like uh, in a, taking care about other things, you don't realize how important it, it can be. I mean, to. Well, yeah. I mean, that, that's kind of what I was trying to say was like, if you, like, let's just say like, if you grow up in Bolivia, I mean, it's just hard to imagine that you. I mean, you're on a whole continent that speaks Spanish, Portuguese, <laughs> but like, you know, yeah. so much of everyone speaks Spanish there. It's like, it's hard to probably picture like, well, what's the actual use of knowing English or knowing German or French? Yeah, Like exactly. I live in Bolivia. Yeah. It's like, how, why is German going to help me? You know? Yeah, but, yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, exactly. That is the same. But the same. Yeah. <laughs> it does open up a portal to another literal other side of the, the, con of the, the world. And then English opens up essentially a portal to almost anywhere. Yeah. which is kind of crazy. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, because, I mean, we know people coming from the other side of the world. I mean, like, it's more than a notion that yeah. divide us, but they speak English. So, yeah, so crazy. It, it is. And I mean, like, the fact that, like, I can try to do a podcast just in English, but then inherently you can actually, like, experience the entire world in theory just through the English version of this podcast, you know, yeah. is really cool. And I think kind yeah. of why I'm trying to do it. So, I mean, uh, about Bolivia specifically, what about Bolivia? Like, what are some things about Bolivia that, that you wish other people knew more of? Or like, what are some aspects of Bolivian culture that you really, you really love and wish the world knew? Well, I think, um, I think Bolivia is a beautiful country, really. Sometimes because of, um, our neighbors, I mean, our neighbors can be more interesting because, and you know, Argentina, because all the football, Brazil, yeah. and I mean, you don't Where's hear your Messi, you yeah, know? I mean, exactly. come on. Hey, what? You do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, uh, well, but, but football in, in, in Bolivia, it's, it's, it sucks. It, it really is bad. So, yeah, I, I have Not loved that aspect of culture, you know, <laughs> different yeah. aspects of culture. Yeah. But I mean, when you hear about South America, I think, uh, it's you hear more about Brazil. It's like, or you are m more interested in knowing mm -hmm. to go to Brazil, or Argentina. I mean, Chile probably. I don't know, but yeah. sometimes you don't hear that much about. Bolivia, no, Bolivia is right? underrated. Yeah, yeah. I think that's 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 a problem because I think Bolivia has so much to offer. I mean, we have, for instance, the Salar de Uni, which like it's like a salt desert. So everything is white. So wow. if you go there, it's like uh especially when it's like a uh, rain, when when there is oh, rain, cool. you can see like uh like mirrors of heaven. So it's a one of the slogans is like welcome to heaven or something like mm, that, you know, yeah, because yeah. It, you can see it like that. Um I think um you have that from one side, you have the mountains from the other side, and then you have the rainforest. So we have a lot of things to offer that which are very, very beautiful in terms of landscapes, for instance. For sure. For nature. And then um, we have a lot of culture. I mean, one of the most known things of my country is the carnival, but it's like a, in a special city where we have like all the typical Bolivian dances, they they are shown that there. Wow! And people dance there because they want to like it's it's like a promise to the Virgin of the of the of the Socavon. If I'm not wrong, hopefully I'm not. Someone is <laughs> gonna kill me if you if I'm saying this what? wrong. <laughs> yeah. But it's like a promise that you make for her, so you have to dance the whole it? day. Carnival day. 
or Oruro. Oruro. Oruro? Carnaval de Oruro. I'm looking up right now. Crazy. Exactly. It's it's beautiful because wow. I mean you go there and you see all the typical dances and all the the typical costumes which are which are so amazing. I mean and the devotion and passion that the people transmit the, the people who are actually dancing transmit while doing it. Yeah. It's wow, it looks really, insane. Yeah, it's 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 great. And I mean like uh, of course you can um enjoy that and and learn and i don't know and it's also um i mean people also believe it's really are really friendly um yeah we're we're very happy we're very yeah how are you i mean if you are a foreigner and you go there and, oh how are you where are you from oh welcome to bolivia here take your 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 beer or whatever i don't know <laughs> it's like that so i think i would like to i, I love that about mm -hmm. my country so much and also the food you know like the food is so good <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I mean uh, it's so so good uh, you have also a lot of variety and diverse in the in the food that we have we have like traditional food but we have also fusions with many other type of food so. oh interesting <laughs> yeah and uh, yeah I, I think there is a lot that my country can offer honestly and um Yeah, yeah, I, I love it. I, I love it very much. I love also the people. I think people are very nice. Sometimes we as Bolivians are like, we, we say, oh, the people, oh. and you know, it's like that. But then, but then again, sometimes when you go away, yeah, you that's realize. Actually, that's exactly what I was going to ask you. Because I was yeah. going to ask like, how, how has traveling affected your perspective on Bolivia? And what have you liked or appreciated more since, or maybe not? As like this much, or how has it changed your perspective? Yeah, well, I think um, it it changed a lot. I mean, I started appreciating more things that I had there that I don't have here. And yeah, one of them, yeah, one of them is the food. <laughs> Definitely, I mean, fuck, I miss I the mean, food so on. much. <laughs> German food, let's be honest. It's <laughs> Sorry, Germans, but what the hell? <laughs> yeah, honestly, I mean, um, the food, and it's so uh, fresh. Everything is so fresh. Yeah. I mean, you can get, like, very free, fresh fruits and very cheap also. Um, and I think I, I start realizing about these tiny details that I had that it's like, oh, my God. Yeah, I had also, like, a big room, you know? I mean, I like my room here. I'm very happy with my room here. <laughs> I need to... <laughs> clarify that but it's but still it's like i don't know um had yeah. so much space so i don't know europe is just in general less spacious yes, you know, yes inherently that's, that's true and also well i also realized that we have a lot of issues i mean i knew about them already but it's like when you come here and and, and this is very important also like uh here in germany i i feel like when we walk in the streets very late you feel like actually oh everything is fine no one is gonna yeah steal us or like it's pretty safe yeah, in it's general pretty safe in general yeah. and yeah i mean like um in 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 my city or in i think in south america it's, it's generally like that you don't you have there are some hours that You know, uh, you, it's you know, it's sketchy. not that. Yes, it's not a good idea to walk. Or yeah. Like, or I don't know. But here, it, I mean, you realize that everything is very safe, very organized. Well, not very organized <laughs> as I thought, but. <laughs> hey Ben. Yeah. Was, but that was, was one all... big misconception of Germany was. Yeah. <laughs> you'd think everything would be like perfectly organized and yeah. really modern, but like it's not as perfectly organized and modern as at least i thought it was going to yeah, be yeah yeah me too i think that's yeah and then i also realized oh okay we're not so so complicated at all we're not so bad i mean like in terms of like <laughs> differences yeah, yeah yeah i mean it's pretty much similar or there are some things that might work better in my opinion in my country like what like for instance um Well, I think this is because I also live in Amsterdam, which is a really small city. But uh, I mean, you need cash here in oh Germany. Oh my word, right? so annoying. So when I have to take cash, I need to go to the Luisenplatz, to the city center <laughs> to get the money. And yeah, that's kind of annoying because there is no ATM. Oh, it's in, so annoying. Yes, there is no, no other place where I can go for my bank at least. And in Bolivia, you have the option that some banks had, all banks have their own application. So... Even if you don't have cash or even if the, I don't know, the coffee shop or whatever doesn't have like 
the, the machines for the cards, you can actually scan a QR code and pay through a QR code. Crazy. So that's very easy. Wow. I mean, and I thought here maybe you could like, that was already yeah, you think a that, thing that, of the past. 10 years you know? ago. 10 years are, ago. Yeah, yeah. yeah they, they do it like with levitation. I don't know, with the mind. I don't know. <laughs> with your minds yeah, i don't but know no, they're still yeah. hanging they're still handing out coins you know it's like what yeah it's like, come yeah, on this like, is germany <laughs> yeah, so you many know? coins so many coins <laughs> yeah oh yeah, my and, gosh. and then i realized yeah actually it's not that bad I, know, oh, yeah. I mean like it works very good actually yeah so definitely yeah. interesting so that's one thing is there anything else that like that really changed your perspective on bolivia yeah um yeah, I was thinking also that, well, I, I admire here the fact that, I mean, in Germany, the, I don't know, I don't know if the states, the government or whatever, but they care a lot about students. You have a lot of good, like, um, benefits for being a student. Yeah, right? definitely. That That's definitely, that's, def there's a lot more benefits here. Yes, that's so cool. I mean, like, uh, yeah, in, in Bolivia, I, I would say like, yeah, I mean... It changed my perspective. Also, I think I love my country more, but I also realized how many things are not, I mean, like in Bolivia, they don't k take care of, about a lot of things. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, here you have, you have discounts and everything because you're a student in Bolivia, you're a student and good for you. Good That's luck. The, good luck. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think in public transportation, you have kind of a discount, but that's, that's pretty much it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm for sure. I mean, I'm definitely the education priority here is pretty, pretty nice. Especially, I mean, the the really cheap, basically free education is yeah. very nice. Yeah, <laughs> very, very nice. Yeah, I mean, yeah, totally. Yeah. All the benefits you can have, like, uh, for being a student. It, yeah, I, I, I think it's, it's awesome. I mean, then it, it, it encourages you. It encouraged you to study more. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, did you have any hesitancy or was it always a plan to eventually come to Germany? Or like, how would you recommend that everyone tries to come to Germany? <laughs> like, what was, what's your idea for like, uh, you know, Bolivians or South Americans in general trying to like move to Europe for education? Well, in my case, um, I think because... <laughs> I go back to my parents. Yeah. But well, my parents did the same. I mean, they were like um they did their bachelor's there and then at some point they decided also to move to to Germany. Well, I think also because the situation in Bolivia was not so good. We 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 I mean that that time they we had a di dictators. Yeah, dictator. Dictators and dictatorships. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't know how to call. It. Yeah, um in Bolivia and they were very very bloody so a lot of people also try to well go out yeah like them. in the, what, the 70s or 80s yes yeah, 70s yeah and the beginning of the 80s makes sense so it's like the movie scarface yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah and then well they did also they study here and then actually they got to know each other here despite the fact that they were in the same school oh, but crazy. They, they knew here each other here they got together here and then they went back to Bolivia. Wow. So, I mean, my entire life I was hearing, I was listening to my well, parents. Well, you been born here, you would have had a, a du dual citizenship. Yeah, that would be cool. What I mean, heck? maybe they didn't think about that. I don't know. <laughs> they should have hopped on a plane <laughs> when you, like, oh, crap, I'm giving birth. Buy a ticket. Boot. <laughs> yeah. Go to Germany. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Maybe that would then be, boom. that would be very practical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very practical. Practical. Practical, yeah. Practical, yeah. <laughs> but well, yeah, the thing is that, uh, so I had always this idea to like, okay, it's because uh, to study my bachelor's in Bolivia and then to do the master's abroad, because also there were more options for scholarships oh, for nice. master's. But I mean, at the beginning I was thinking about Germany, then I, I started thinking about other countries. And actually when I, when I started like, okay, I'm going to make this project actually happen because I was like thinking about it like many years while yeah, I was working. Yeah. I never did. Um, then I, I was like, okay, I'm going to apply for, um, you know, this scholarship evening for the UK. Oh, wow. I, I'm not familiar. Yeah. Well, I, well, they're, I mean, very known, at least in Bolivia, I think. 
because they are very good. A, a very, it's a very good scholarship, but <laughs> it's hard to get the makes uh, sense. The, makes sense. The scholarship because there are a lot of people applying around the world, and it was funny because they one of the uh, requirements they asked you for is to apply to three universities. So mm. uh, in the UK, so I applied. I got accepted. Accepted. In, all, in three? The, all three? Yeah. But I didn't get this scholarship. Uh, so you're <laughs> so, like, uh, and UK, UK is at least for my research was still pretty expensive. Oh like, my to God. Go to yeah. 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 It's like. Kind of like the US. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It's outrageous. <laughs> That's why I'm here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I know. It's, 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 it's too, it's, it's master's crazy. Degrees, unless some, like, unless you're, most people, how they get master's degrees is either they work at the school while they're getting their master's degree mm -hmm. or their employer, their employer is paying for their master's degree. It's like yeah. most people don't pay for their own master's degrees in the US. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it makes sense totally yeah. because it's crazy expensive. It's so expensive. I mean, uh, when I when I didn't get the scholarship, I was like, yeah, there's no way I can go to UK. I mean, like <laughs> yeah. it's like uh, I would have to get a loan and just to pay the the studies, you oh, know, my because for my uh, I need yeah, to leave who there wants also to like that, you know it's like it's the worst yeah so then at that point you then that's when you had so you already had applied to three and then now you have to apply to more in germany <laughs> yeah then i applied to another one in germany i was ac accepted and then i um yeah i was thinking okay it makes sense also to think about germany again because i'm already i already know that culture yeah. i i know the language i yeah and i mean the the studies are for free and I, I have a lot of people that I know here in Germany, yeah, so nice. it makes sense. It's really nice. So then I decide to come. And I think also um, it's very good, I think, for... I mean, it's hard because I had also a really also a hard, challenging year. But um, yeah, I would say it's good for people also trying to go abroad to study or at least to know because, I mean... It's hard also to decide to stay and not to go back, you know, like that's, that's hard. I mean, For sure. I don't know if I would stay here, but, but I think, uh, in any case, it's good to go out in, to see your country from outside and to know, you know, the rest of the world, to know people from other different countries that you may not Absolutely. Meet. Well, I mean, one thing for me was that I never really thought about it was like, I mean, obviously for like the U S passport different for bolivia but the u.s <laughs> yeah. passport you are allowed to like stay in countries for, like out of the country for 90 days which is very nice but like it doesn't really ever give you the chance to like just live somewhere mm -hmm. so it's like the, the the cool advantage of just doing a bachelor's degree gives you the chance to literally just live somewhere and experience the culture for a few years is i think a really cool like experience it's hard to it, it's hard to get that experience at other points in your life if yeah. you're not doing it for like a degree of some sort like bachelor's or or masters unless you're going to try to get like a work visa and try to work somewhere else but that's obviously just a tougher process yeah yeah i mean i mean it's hard it's, it's really hard because it, it's, it's shocking you know like uh the way people live here you need to understand the way the system works the way yeah everything works the the way people are i mean it's totally different than where i come from right yeah definitely but but it's good i mean like i think i I had the chance to learn about about myself also, like how how can I deal with these things? How can I like, I don't know, the simple thing that I could cook today, for instance, okay, to survive. Okay, that <laughs> yeah. makes me grow up. I, I don't know, for right? Sure, because, definitely. Yeah, because always if you're home, like... There's your mom, there is there's your family, they are gonna yeah. help it you makes anywhere. It easy. Yeah. yeah, of course. And then being so far, it's like, oh, okay, it's it's hard, but but it's a good experience, and I and I think it enriches you as a person, and also I as agree. to know so many people. I mean, right? Yeah, I mean, because I mean, like now, like if we wanted to travel, you it basically opens up like twenty places in the world where you could just easily go live or hang out with someone yeah. for free. It's like heck yeah, like, that's great, you know? Yeah, yeah, so it, exactly. It provides like a long term upside too in that regard. Um, yeah. yeah. So, are there any? stereotypes about Bolivia that you feel like people get completely wrong or like are there wrong stereotypes or anything that you feel like does not justify the stereotype of Bolivia or what are what are some stereotypes of Bolivia that you feel like aren't portrayed accurately <laughs> um 
Well, um, I think there is also an idea that, um, well, I'm not sure about this, but, but I think people, when, when they think about Bolivia, they think about, I don't know, people who would certain like a uh, physical aspect, for instance, oh, I don't know, sometimes. And we are so diverse. I mean, you can find many different people in Bolivia, like with with uh, darker skin or hell, uh, well, I don't know, whiter skin. I don't yeah. know how to say Germans. it. Yes. <laughs> or be, I mean, it's, it's a very diverse country. So, yeah, sometimes I have heard that also like in before uh, in other countries. Okay, when I was like, where are you from? I'm from Bolivia. But you don't look like a Bolivian, you know, and I'm going to, why, what, like? yeah, exactly, exactly. And I was like, what? I mean, I, have you been in Bolivia? Have you idea? Have you yeah. any idea of that? And then, yeah, I mean, it's like, um, yeah, I think in general, general speaking, all, all Latin America is very diverse. I mean, you can yeah. find a lot of people di with different physical, um, With a different physical aspect, actually. Sure. Uh, yeah, I mean, we are we are like a mix, you know? Yeah, I, I, I wonder if it's like, maybe just because I just generally don't know. If I had to guess, it's like if someone pictures, what does a South American look like? I think someone mm -hmm. would picture, picture like the average Brazilian, like Neymar or something. Mm -hmm. You know, like that's what they would picture. Like South American, Neymar, you know? Yeah, yeah, But yeah. like... Obviously, that's just not true. No, it's <laughs> you know? not true at all. There's, no. You can't classify South America as a look because it's extremely diverse. But not, yeah. and, I really, and I never really considered how much like Asian influence there is in mm. South America, like talking to Sylvia and about the Asian yeah. influence in like Peru, yeah. for example, things like that. I never really had considered how much there is there. Yeah, no, I mean, yeah, it's we are we are a mix of everything. Mm -hmm. a, there, there were a lot of people coming from different parts of the world living in South America and then they they put them their roots also and then yeah we're totally we're totally different so I think that's one of the stereotypes but I don't know like maybe another stereotype but I think that's actually true but it depends uh I mean I think one of the stereotypes is also that we Bolivians are very shy and very like uh, we don't speak too much. Oh really? Like, oh, I, yeah. I, I've never really heard this one before. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I think we're not so popular. <laughs> I don't yeah. know, but I mean, like, uh, I think it depends. I think is it I'm, like uh, compared to like Colombians or something. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah, but I think that's also kind of true because I think. People of the Highlands should be like that. I'm, 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 I kind, I'm kind of like that sometimes mm. also. But uh, I don't know. I have heard also people saying that it depends on the weather. I mean, if you're like in a part <laughs> where you are like a, it's a hot weather. People tend to be more like a open, open mm. more like a, I don't know, extrovert. Extrover yeah, exactly. And people from places which are more like a colder for instance are like more yeah. close more um interesting i don't know but, but i think it it's kind of true but it depends we are yeah, not all exactly. like that yeah crazy i mean like how i would in my head another stereotype might come up that bolivia is not very safe for people to visit like but what's your experience with that because i don't doesn't come off like that's the case Yeah, well, I think, honestly, I, I mean, I have never been like, uh, so like, how can I call this in English? Like when, um, well, my things were stolen <laughs> at some point, but I never got like to meet a guy who was like, give me everything oh, or I'm going to mug. Mug. Yeah. Never, never. That, <laughs> that never happened to me. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks, uh, Lord. <laughs> right. Thanks, God. Yeah, that never happened to me. But um, I think I think it's you know it's pretty safe. I mean, there are of course there are some places, not only I mean in the cities and also in 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 the whole country where yeah you need to hear what people say. They, if they say don't go to that street in the middle of the night, then you should listen to them, right? Like yeah. don't go to that place. Then okay. Um, I think, yeah, of course, um, it, there are some places that are more dangerous, but I think 
if you if you are aware of that and you take also listen to those advices and things, you're gonna be fine. I think it's not like um, there are like a shooting or kind that kind of stuff like in the streets in the middle of the day. That that yeah. doesn't happen. No, that doesn't happen. But yeah, I mean those those uh, that criminal aspect aspect. It's general. Similar, I would say, in South America, yeah, but I mean, it I'm depends. Sure. I mean, there are some different levels. Of course, of like that, obviously, there's but... still like the cartel stuff that people would always like, you know, oh, Bolivia yeah. or you know, Colombia or whatever. With like the cartels, and that dates back again, to, like movies like Scarface and stuff like <laughs> that that show that type of stuff. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, they exist. They are real, right? But it's not everything. I mean, of course, of course. I mean, um, yeah. I think you you can be you can visit Bolivia and be very safe. I mean. Yeah, you just need to, of course, like I said, to listen to some advices, okay? Don't walk that street at the <laughs> middle of the night or better, okay? Don't take a taxi from the street or if you're going to take a taxi, better call it, you know? Th mm -hmm. Those kind of things. But yeah. yeah, because I have lived with those things like my, my whole life. So yeah, I mean, you need to take care. You need to take care of yourself, of course. Yeah, that makes sense. But so from my own interest, are there any perspective, are there any stereotypes that Bolivians have of Americans that like, what are some stereotypes of Americans that Bolivians might have? Mm. You can just lay them all out there. <laughs> Insult me. <laughs> um, okay. Oh, okay. I think one of them is like, um, all Americans are rich. I mean, like, <laughs> if you go We're to... We just got money, baby. <laughs> yeah, I think that's, that's true. I mean, like, uh, um, yeah, if you go to Bolivia and you say, I'm, I'm from North America, I'm from the US, uh, they will say, okay, you have money. So <laughs> you can... <laughs> How much money are we talking? Like $5? Because I got $5. <laughs> mm, I don't know, but I mean, like... Uh, the idea is that you're rich. No matter yeah. how much money do you really have, that it's makes like, sense. oh, you're rich. You're yeah, yeah. from the US, yes. Then, mm. then everything could be more expensive for you mm. because they, they realize you're from, from, from yeah, the Yeah, don't US. barter on the streets when you tell people you're from the US. <laughs> yeah, Damn. yeah. Or, um, yeah, exactly. Or, I don't know. Um, yeah, I think that's one of the most common or, yeah, I mean... For instance, it's very it's very common that any person that people see in the streets, blonde with blue eyes or something, it, it it's 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 a gringo. You know that concept? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a gringo. No matter if maybe right. the guy is German, maybe the guy is from UK. I Dutch, don't know. It's a gringo. English, <laughs> American. Yeah, no matter they are the same gringos yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> with money. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> makes sense. Crazy. I mean, yeah. How often? Did, did you meet any Americans in Bolivia? Oh, mm, not so often, to be honest. But I have known some that were like visiting or maybe mm -hmm. I, I remember I knew a girl who was from the U.S., but she was working in the U.S. Embassy. So ah, that, that makes, makes sense. sense. But she was like a, a watching a theater theater play. In, in, I was act, acting actually in that theater play and... Yeah, I have a friend who who's very, I don't know how to say, too popular, maybe, yeah. because that's the other thing. We're not so many people, really. So it's kind of common that, oh, I know that guy and that guy knows that guy, which I know. <laughs> so it's very common <laughs> to know the people, at least yeah. in La Paz, it's like that. So, uh, well, this friend, I don't know how, but he got to know this girl. So, yeah, she was she was working, but she was not going to stay too long. But she was like, oh, so happy, enjoying. And so, yeah, I mean, it's not so common. I think I haven't met so many Americans, but yeah. but I have seen. I didn't yeah, actually somehow. realize how small of a country population-wise Bolivia was. 12 million. That's smaller yeah. than I would have guessed. Yeah. I mean, it, and I mean, the, the country is huge compared to yeah, their people. Yeah, how many people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I would have never guessed that. Yeah, we're not. I mean, that's none. smaller than many United States, like states in the United States. I yeah. It's smaller than seven of them. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, crazy. Exactly. <laughs> that's why it's like I, I told you. If you go wow. and if you if you leave in, in La Paz, more probably in Ohio you're gonna... than in Bolivia. 
<laughs> that's crazy. I lived in Ohio for like four years. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, exactly. That's why it's easy to know all of them. You know, we're like uh, in Spanish, we say uh, el mundo es un pañuelo. That means that somehow you know everyone. But in that case, I think it, it totally applies for crazy. Uh, for La Paz, Bolivia. I don't know, because we are like... The same. We know. Okay, I know that guy. That guy knows that guy, and that guy. Yeah. It's like okay, You're like three and that connections guy. <laughs> away from everyone. You know? Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> wow, that's insane. Yeah, I would have never guessed that. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. So, so, um, what is the best decision you ever made in your life? Wow, my best decision. Yeah. <gasps> mm, let me think about it. Mm. Oh, it's so so difficult. If there's just some really good ones that come to mind, it doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be the <laughs> best, best one. Best one. <laughs> Damn you! I was I was thinking. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Um, well, at some point, I I start dub dubbing it. I I was not sure about this this decision I did. But I started, when I started doing theater, I think mm. that was one of my Yeah, best when did you start decisions. doing theater? When I started college. I, oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Like it was funny because it was like simultaneously. And since then I have always like worked or, and then did theater and then acting. I don't know. And at some point I really thought, no, I, this was a really bad thing because, you know, acting making theater like started to like make me really doubt about a lot of things i i have mm. learned for instance like the way i wanted to leave the way um where i wanted to work i don't know oh wow yeah fascinating wait wh when did that point when did that start to arise like what caused that um i think when when i realized i wanted to do that seriously it was not just a hobby at some point I really wanted to dedicate myself to that. I really mm. wanted to, yeah. And, and and I mean, like I said, in La Paz, we're very small. So I took <laughs> workshops with all the most known actors and actresses in La Paz. Oh, wow, really cool. Because it's very it's easy, so to say. Once you're in, but, you're kind of in, you know? Like Yeah, yeah, exactly. But, but somehow I was like, uh, okay, I, I knew them. I, and... I had some some nice process during this 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 um so to say this moment yeah this moment exactly because I I I knew a lot about myself also like I don't know um because you become more sensible to everything I think and at some point I was like I don't know because when I was at school, I was thinking, okay, I'm gonna study then something in college, then I wanna work, then everything like yeah. very right, like so very it, it changed your perspective on what's the point of life, yeah, <laughs> like what's the yes. purpose of life yeah, here, you exactly, know, exactly, exactly, totally. And mm -hmm. then I was like, fuck, no, I know, I don't know, no, I'm in a crisis, you oh, know, I don't know what <laughs> yeah, to do yeah, anymore. Yeah. And fucking the other, that, yeah, because I started to think I, I want to be an actress, I want to. I want to dedicate myself to that. And then I had another crisis and it was like, no, but how am I, how am I gonna leave? How, how am I going to live and survive and survive being just an actress? You know, like, uh, I, I mean, I need to, <laughs> yeah. I need to pay bills, I guess. For right? sure. You know, at, at one point, there's two sides of that argument, you know, cause you can pursue what you love and just live whatever means of that lifestyle you have to live to do that thing like if you have to live in a, in a place with six people and just act you could do that i mean if people if people in new york or la probably do that you know they yeah, share a place with no. seven or eight people and just act and yes, see and see yes. what happens which i mean if that's at the end of the day that's the fun thing about life which i think for me i've kind of realized over the past few years is like you can kind of just go do things like <laughs> it, life's a pretty open world game you know you don't have yeah. to um, just, you have a lot of options. And I think that's part yeah. of it is like, you could just be an actor or an actress, you know, and that could be your life. It just, you might have to change your lifestyle to try to go after it, but it is a, it is an interesting thought, you know, mm. like what can mm. you have to sacrifice to try to pursue that dream in that sense, you know? Yeah. I mean, I mean, yeah, I had that, that thought also like, and yeah, and then I I wasn't sure anymore. And now it's like I know it's 
very important for me. I mean, like, it's part of what I am. For sure. But at the same time, I I really, I'm not sure if I would like to, like, I don't know, live so, so, I don't know how, I, the expression in, in, in English, but it's kind of like to live so stressed, I mean, because I have to yeah, live with six people check or, or yeah, yeah, whatever it is. Yeah. Or like, I don't know. Because with so little security almost just because you have to, it's gig to gig or whatever it is with acting and yeah. you know, trying to, there's no yeah. security. Yeah, exactly. And I don't know if I would like to live like that. I don't know. At some point I, I thought, okay, maybe, maybe that's why I also studied, um, because I can live from that and may, be an actress. I don't know. And I don't have to like, I take any project or whatever I want to do. It's sense. like, because I have something that like it's used to yeah. make me <laughs> for sure. Like you're, making pro you're at least making progress here. So that if you don't make progress there, it's, it works fine. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. Kind of. I remember a friend told me that once then she changed up her mind, but, <laughs> but uh, I mean, this, 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 the, um, what she said to me is still in my mind. She said, okay, I, I, I want to be an artist. That's exactly what I want to do. But I think I have studied and I have finished it because I don't want to leave uh, from being an artist. So I can, I don't have to prostitute myself, so to say. I see. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, I actually yeah. read a book from um, Arnold Schwarzenegger about mm -hmm. his perspective on that. Because like he just said the same thing. He said he could have gone into acting like five years before that, but mm -hmm. he decided to wait and not just take all the cheap jobs right off the rip to like just pay the bills. So he decided to like try to like work, save money, and then only take jobs that he actually thought could be hit movies because mm. he didn't want to uh, have to take whatever he could get just to pay the bills. Yeah. And so there is like a strategic aspect to it too, I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah, So yeah. you could be the next Arnold is what I'm trying to say <laughs> <The next here. laughs> Yeah, who knows? Who knows? Yeah, I would, I would really like to. I mean, maybe, I don't know. It, it's hard. It's hard. It, it was a really complicated thing in my life. I mean, more than anything. Well, no, now coming here was also very, very complicated. I mean, the whole process before, the process here and everything. Yeah. But oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy. So, um, what is the most unpopular idea or thought or thing that you believe? What's the most unpopular thing that you believe? Popular or idea that you have. It could be any of the above. Something that a lot of people don't agree with. Hmm. That of course you're willing to share. Yeah, <laughs> I don't want to share anything. Else. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, at, I don't know. At some point, I was. I think I'm. I'm still struggling to between these two ideas one was like okay i should like do my passion my my work you know mm -hmm. and then for some things that happened to me back home before coming it's like i was thinking no i need money <laughs> i need money to leave i need money to go to the doctor i need money for everything so i need money and then when i talk about when i i say this sometimes it hurts like Okay, so you just want money in life. That's the only thing you want. It's like yeah. so basic. <laughs> right. You want money to survive, to make more money, to make more money to yeah, survive. Yeah. And I mean, no, it's not what I mean <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But yeah, I mean, I think people doesn't want to hear that sometimes. But yeah, I mean, if you want to do anything in life, you, you will need to have a capital something if you want to be an entrepreneur you need mm -hmm. you need something you need like a base to start you know for sure if you wanna yes if you need health i mean in at least in my country you need also money to pay for doctors or pay for anything so that really hit me i mean i never i never realized about that before yeah this this holy thing that happened to me I, I was like really not thinking about that. I was just no passion, no life, everything. No, but then no, it's not like that. So it it started to like um 
yeah, I think, yeah, I mean, it sounds so negative from my side or maybe also you're so superficial, maybe, but all you care about is money. How <laughs> yeah, money. How, yeah, how basically. Yeah. No, I, no, I think that makes sense, though. <laughs> I, I agree. I think there's just a lot of ways to go about it where you can, you know, make money or try to save money. And I think a lot of oftentimes that people would try not to like there's ways that you can sacrifice to save mm -hmm. money while then also pursuing your dream. Like, for example, like I could have tried to rent a place after college to not be the guy that lived with my parents. Mm -hmm. But I decided well, I'll just be the guy that lives with my parents after college like a bum and and be a youtuber <laughs> and try to do that and just give it a go see what happens you know so like you know obviously it's you can look at it like it's a privilege to still be able to live with your parents which yeah it is but a lot of people aren't willing to like put up with living with their parents or they don't want to be that guy that lives with their parents after mm. college you know um so that's just one example for me that like really allowed me to pursue a dream in that regard, while also saving money and not paying for rent, which is one of the toughest things to do. So mm. I, I guess those types of opportunities, if you have the opportunity to potentially live with your parents or something like that, it's it's doable, you know, and yeah. it might just take someone sucking up their pride a little bit, you know, like uh, mm. <laughs> at least in the U.S., it's a pretty like big thing. It's like you're living with your parents like, oh, you know, living with your parents. Yeah, yeah I can imagine that. You know? I mean, I think it's the same here. Maybe in, I don't know if in Europe, but at least in Germany. And the thing is that for us, I don't know if it's like that in whole Latin America, but um, I mean, I was living with my parents yeah. also. My perspective would be it's a little bit more common in Latin America to live with your parents. Yeah. Yeah. It's more common. Exactly. That's that's uh, because it's um, it's hard sometimes. I mean, it's, I think sometimes it's, it's it comes from a belief that, OK, you know, I'm going to live with my parents till I married and then I. I can move with my husband, for instance. Yeah. Some of I, I think there are some women that think of, sure. think that. Um, in other cases, because um, on the other hand, it's because at least in 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 my case, I was also living with my parents because um, well, all the jobs I had, they never paid me well, <laughs> so I never had enough money to like. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> to move and live uh, alone because, like you know, like rents were too expensive, yeah. and my salaries were so basic that no, I couldn't afford it. So, but I think it's also yeah. I mean that that was one of the reasons, and also because I don't know. I mean, it's nice to live so long with your parents on one hand. I would say because you share more. You can save more money. I mean, I, sure. I could save it also to come here. That That's really good. Yeah. The darn blocked account. Yeah. <laughs> Damn blocked account. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> totally. And um, yeah. And, and then on the other hand, it's also complicated because it's it's so hard to to let that life go, you know, like sure. to, okay, no, I'm now I'm going to start thinking about myself and uh, taking decisions by myself you know it's it's very it's also a hard process and yeah well um, I've, I've seen like it let's say you're the average american whatever like you go to college and then you move out when you're 18 you don't really ever move back with your parents mm -hmm. like by the time you're 22 you've already spent 85 percent of the hours and minutes that you'd spend with your parents your entire life Mm -hmm. so it's like there are some really cool aspects of like living with your parents at times even in your 20s or something because like you're you're getting that time that most people wouldn't have never would have never gotten with their parents which i think you know yeah. once your parents pass away that's like you know really yeah. valuable yeah yeah totally and yeah i enjoyed my life with them i mean like then then you think about exactly the same point maybe they if they pass away then how much yeah. time did i really spend with them and yeah, I mean, yeah, I think especially for uh, uh, Latin Americans, family is very important. For I sure. mean, yeah, in my case, for me, my family is like everything, you know, like uh, they are my 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 strength. I, they yeah. are everything. So I really, I'm really happy to have them spend the, the, this time with them. And well, okay, at some point I had to grow up, right? <laughs> so... <laughs> That's why I damn also it. came here. Yes, <laughs> damn it. Yes, that's why I came here. And now I'm having a grow up uh, yeah, <laughs> life, you know? Of course. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, I, I think for me, again, like traveling really shrunk the world for me. Like, at least living um, in the U.S., it's like, man, Europe is so far away. <laughs> yeah. Like, but now that I'm here, it's yeah. like the world's so small. Like, it makes you want to like travel more now that I'm here because yes. it's like, oh, I could go to Bolivia. I could go to Peru. I could go to India. I could go to China. Like, it feels so much more accessible. And yeah. maybe it's just the difference between being in Europe because you're so close to so many other countries versus like the Americas where it's like you just feel like you're kind of in this own little <laughs> area over there, especially yeah. in the U.S. Because it's like, frick, you can't go to anywhere. Canada and Mexico, like, cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah. like, yeah. yeah. So I, at least for me, I highly recommend the experience for anyone because it really does open up. Yeah. A lot me of the too. world. Me too. Yes, totally. I mean, you can realize a lot more about your own country, but also exactly you can know people from all the different mm -hmm. part of the world and that's amazing then you know oh okay this place sounds so cool and and yeah exactly it's the same i you know i'm here i would i have the will to travel more to get to know because i think yeah to know so many people from different oh, cultures yeah. also enriches you for sure because like mm -hmm. it just gives so much perspective to different opinions and and lifestyles and what that means and like inherently i think just gives you a broader more interesting perspective on humanity yeah, <laughs> like totally. in in that regard yeah, yeah totally it makes you more human i mean for sure yeah and, and to understand the way they think the way they their beliefs and everything is like okay it's interesting this i didn't know that uh i mean this country people believe that because of this for instance right yeah so, definitely well, I mean, I, you know, even for, again, growing up in the U.S., even though, like, the U.S. is so big, it's like after an amount of time, it feels small, mm. especially since I had been, I was able, I was lucky enough to be able to, like, do a lot of road trips and things like that and travel, um, mm. just having the car and everything. Um, and so, like, at, at some point, it feels pretty small, like, relative to everything. And then, yeah, I don't know. It, it's, it's interesting to, like, to get out of there. And, like, obviously, even though America has so much, has so much culture and it's, in its own right, mm. you know, coming in, then you put it into perspective, like, you know, there's a, a billion Indians, there's a mm -hmm. billion Chinese people, you know, yeah. like, it's insane, like, you know, America <laughs> feels big, but then you, it's like, they're three, four times bigger, you know, it's like, holy yeah. crap. Um, and so, long story short, I think, yeah, like, building that perspective on, like, how someone from Bolivia lives, or someone from India lives, or China, or, you know, Peru, is so... Yeah so cool for me you know and yeah yeah totally i mean in india they they all speak different languages oh in my every goodness single yeah state so it's like what and they, <laughs> they, the people communicate themselves with they english they can't even compete with each other yeah <laughs> yeah i mean i was like oh my god <laughs> <laughs> insane insane totally but yeah yeah definitely yeah so it's just all those little things that we all we like get to learn i think it's just so cool you know yeah and uh yeah yeah I agree with your sentiment that yeah. traveling and, and, and getting out of wherever anyone's from is really cool. And if you can find ways to do it. Yeah, yeah. Now I want to go to Nevada, for instance. That was like, oh my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> that would be nice. Come on, visit, you know? <laughs> yeah. But yeah. yeah. So, well, this was a great conversation. Thank you, Thank you so, so much. much. Thanks, thanks for joining me and, and joining me on this journey. And I'm sure we'll do it again at some point because it was a blast. Yeah, no, I really enjoyed it. I really like it. So, thank you for inviting me. Thanks to you. Thanks. <laughs>